Welcome back everybody to part three of the series. We've got our gold and quartered with silver now so that we've got an alloy that's approximately 27% pure gold in here, alloyed with that sterling silver. It's called inquartation. The reason we do this is so that now the nitric acid will be able to penetrate each of these pieces of 27% gold until it gets all the way to the core of each piece. It forms a honeycomb structure in each piece as it goes and removes nearly 100% of the silver and base metals. If we tried to go straight to aqua regia with that carrot scrap that we had in the beginning, what we'd experience is a very dirty solution that's hard to precipitate from because you can't see what's going on in there, number one. And number two, we'd experience passivation. Passivation happens when the hydrochloric acid in the aqua regia forms a hard crust of silver chloride on the outside of the gold and shields the gold from becoming dissolved by the aqua regia. We eliminate both of those problems by encoding our carrot scrap with sterling silver. So let's get right to it. Let's get out here and dissolve out the silver and base metals with hot dilute nitric acid boils. Before we get started here, I wanted to show you uh, the crucibles this is a brand new one, and we'll be using this to do the final melt of our 25 troy ounce gold bar. So I'm going to set that aside, but you see the size and shape of it. And uh, here's the one we just got done using to do this inquartation. You can see how much of the uh, graphite has burnt away. So these things don't last forever they do get consumed in the uh, melting process here's one that i used to uh make silver shot for my silver cell and you can see how thin it is i'm i'm not going to use this one anymore it's too thin but i hang on to them because they got a little metal in there and i can scrape that down and that's the reason i wanted to show this to you this is the uh crucible that we used to do our inquartation and there's some gold stuck to the inside of the wall here and the reason I'm pointing this out is because people ask about losses that happen during the refining process and each time you handle or manipulate this metal uh, tiny losses occur here we've got stuff metal that's stuck to the inside of the uh, crucible here. I'm trying to scrape it all down when to get it out of there. Uh, there's probably a, maybe a gram, gram and a half, maybe two grams of uh, encoded gold down here. But it's enough to create a small loss for us. And uh, in refining, every little bit counts. So there we've got the, uh, I got it out of there. Yeah, I got it out of there. Here's our, uh, it's going to be lots of dirt in there, but there are pieces of encorded gold in there. And uh, if we don't take the time to recover it out of here, it will produce a loss for us. Uh, every time we handle the gold in any manner, uh, when we pour it, a little bit of it bounces out of the dish and goes on the floor. When we dissolve it in aqua regia, some of it will turn into a mist and leave the beaker. When we pour the aqua regia solution with the gold in it into a, uh, a beaker to precipitate it, little drops of gold will fly out of there and become a loss. When we precipitate the gold, it causes a foaming reaction and the little droplets of gold come up out of the beaker and are lost. So the point is there's losses all along the way, small losses, and they do add up. And uh, minimizing these losses is the, uh, the job of the refiner, and it will depend on the skill and patience that the refiner has. One more quick thing here. If you notice, these granules are all a different color, and uh, some of the 18K metal that I added on our last batch that we uh, imported, had some dental scrap in it. Dental scrap is a known carrier of platinum group metals. And so I'm thinking that the uh, different colors 
of the encorded gold here is due to the different alloys that were in the carrot scrap that I encorded with the silver. So that's why some of it looks brown here. And this piece is beautiful. It's a uh, piece of 7K gold. It's got an iridescent look to it. And uh, But then you got another piece down here that looks right brown looking. But uh, the reason that we have the different colors is because of the different metals that are alloyed with the carrot scrap. Just wanted to show you that before we uh, put some acid on this. I've got the encorded gold in my five liter beaker up here. And now what we're gonna do to get this thing started, I've got uh, some concentrated nitric acid. I'm gonna measure out about 150 milliliters to uh, add to the beaker there to get this reaction started. And then what we're gonna do after we get this going is I've got a uh, delivery device set up, apparatus, and we'll uh, set that up and add nitric acid real slow. I'm just adding this in all at once just to get this thing kicked off and get this started. This is my homemade nitric acid delivery system. I've got a funnel up there with a uh, stopcock on it so I can control the flow of acid. And then I've got a tube that will deliver the acid down to the uh, beaker inside the fume hood there. And so that will allow us to add the acid very slowly, just a trickle. Uh, the trick here is to get as much acid into the reaction as possible, as quick as possible. So I'm gonna fill this funnel up here. It's a 500 milliliter funnel. All right, we got uh, 500 milliliters of concentrated nitric acid in our funnel. And now I'm gonna start to trickle. I'm gonna drain a little bit of that out because it's kind of overfilled. Here we go. And this will start a trickle of acid through this tube and down into our reaction inside the beaker. Got a little trickle of acid going. And this will feed acid into our reaction inside the beaker nice and slow so we don't have to sit out here and add acid wait for the reaction to die add acid wait for the reaction to die it's all automatic in this reaction the nitric acid will dissolve the silver and the base metals down to the core of each of those pieces of encorded gold forming a honeycomb structure inside as it progresses. Okay, we've added the 500 milliliters of nitric acid. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the delivery tube out. And what we'll do is crank the heat up on this now to about medium. It's already hot just from the reaction, but I'm gonna add some heat with the burner now, and we'll let this boil until all those fumes are gone. We started this at about 4 p.m., and it is currently about 5.20. So I've got a total of 650 milliliters of nitric in there with our encorded gold. And as you can see, it's boiling. And what I want to do now is uh, all the fumes are gone and that tells me that the uh, available nitric in there has reacted completely. So what I'm going to do, 
I've got a jar here. It's got a bunch of sterling silver in it. And uh, what I'm going to do is pour off the solution from this beaker into this jar. And uh, the reason I got silver in here is to consume any excess nitrate that might still be in this solution. The solution is going to have a ton of silver in it. And since some of the material was white gold that I uh, used for this refining, we're probably going to have some uh, platinum group metals in here as well. Now, don't freak out. I've got a long pair of gloves on all the way up to my uh, elbows. And I'm going to reach in here and I'm going to pour the solution in this jar. Uh, normally, I would not do this. I would. Uh, take it out and pour it away from me but I don't have any choice here because of the camera angle that I've got here so I'm gonna pour this off now best I can into this jar full of silver there's our encorded gold pour this off carefully Alright, we did it pretty much. Now I'm going to put it back up here on the heat. Let's see if we get that drop off of there. There we go. Put this back up on the heat. I'm going to add some fresh water now. Alright, let me set this silver jar up out of the way here. Sorry if I bumped the camera. Alright, there we go. Now what we're going to do is I've got a, uh, a bottle of distilled water here. I'm going to rinse down the sides of our beaker with it. Get all the silver nitrate rinsed back down into the uh, jar there. And now I've got a gallon of water here. And I'm going to add... You know what? Actually, what I'm going to do here... I've got some... Uh, some used nitric acid from previous reactions and I think I'm going to use that now because I'm going to need room in those containers to pour off the nitric acid uh, from these final reactions so this is just used nitric acid from a previous refining it's still got some active nitric in it. I'm going to pour this right on in because I'll need the room in this bottle. Later on I'm going to be filling it back up with uh, uh, solution out of here when we're done. Let that react for a minute. All right, that reaction has calmed down. I'm going to reinsert our delivery tube here for the nitric acid. From the funnel, I've recharged the funnel. If you look up here, uh, it's full of acid. We're going to start the flow now. We've got the tube inside the beaker. We're going to restart the flow here. and just put a trickle going in to our beaker down here and continue to let this react. The second nitric boil is uh, complete. 
going to pull the delivery tube out here. And I've got a beaker over here. What we're going to do is transfer the solution now. The nitrix has been spent in this solution. So what I'm going to try to do is get in here. And again, I'm pouring the solution towards me, so don't freak out. I know that's not the proper thing to do. But in order to be able to get this shot on the camera, I've got to do it. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I've got some distilled water. I'm going to pour some distilled water in here now and rinse off as much of the uh, liquid that I can here. And what we'll do is swish this around just a little bit get some of that uh, silver nitrate rinsed off of there. Pour this off. And then we're going to go with another nitric acid boil. We're going to keep doing this until we get all of our base metals and silver rinsed off of here. And that's the goal here is to uh, Use the dilute hot nitric acid to remove all the silver and base metals from the uh, encorded gold. Produce a lot of waste here. You can see that I'm really not set up to uh, refine this much metal all at once. Let me see what can I do. I'm going to move this out of the way. And what we'll do, I'm going to add metal or some water. This is just distilled water. And I've got my funnel up top full of nitric. I'm going to put some straight into the beaker to get this, uh, get this reaction rolling. And then now what we'll do is reinsert our delivery tube. Let me get that rinsed off. I'm gonna reinsert our delivery tube here. Cover this up. And then I'm gonna start the flow of nitric acid from my funnel here. Here it goes. Should see a little trickle coming out. There we go. And we'll just let this trickle on down in there and continue to react. It is 11 p.m. I've been at this now for, well, since about four. I've got to make some room here in this uh, container. Right here. I'm going to pour some of this liquid out of this big beaker into this container and then we'll pour off our uh, our nitric boil into this big beaker once I make some room in here as high as I dare go there cover him back up move him in the back I had to reconfigure man because uh, there just wasn't enough room in here so I had to take that double burner out and put my single burner in there. Now we've got enough room to manipulate some stuff here. All right, here we go. We're going to try to pick up this beaker of boiling nitric acid and nit uh, silver nitrate solution. I'll pour it in here. you're not supposed to pour it towards me for the third time but that's the only option I have right now with the camera 
set up like it is. That's our granules, they're looking pretty good. getting there those uh, granules are looking like they're turning nice and brown which is what we want to see that means all the silver and the base metals are being removed the gold is getting left behind this is looking real good man I've had about two liters of uh, nitric acid through here so far it's like coffee beans. I think we're gonna max this storage beaker out. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some distilled, let me move this out of the way. I'm gonna put some distilled water on this back here. And then I'll, I've got a uh, bottle of used nitric acid from some previous reactions. I'm just going to pour this in, see what kind of reaction we get. I'm thinking the, uh, a lot of the silver has been removed now and the base metals have been removed with those uh, two liters worth of nitric boils previously. And so pouring the acid in is not pouring it in slowly is not as critical. So now we'll just uh, let this go here. I don't think I'm going to hook up my apparatus anymore. I'm just going to start adding doses of nitric until we get a colorless solution in there with the gold. This uh, nitric boil is just about done here. I've got some pieces of silver here that I'll add to this beaker and uh, I want to put some silver in this beaker to consume any excess nitric acid that might be in our solution here. Just burn these off till they quit smoking. Stick them down in here. do is we'll uh, go ahead and pour off this boiling nitric acid here into this container. Let's see how am I going to do this? Uh, trying to reach in here sideways around the camera. There we go. Oh yeah, there's plenty of excess nitric in there. You can see by the reaction that I get when that stuff hits that uh, silver in there. That's the reason we put the silver in, is so that the excess nitric in this solution that I'm pouring off gets consumed. All right. Put rinse this uh, gold off with a little distilled water and add that to our uh, rinse beaker here or our beaker here that I just prepared with the silver in it. Look at that gold, man. It's looking real good now. Looking real good. I'm gonna do another quick rinse on this. Man, this is looking super good, man. Oh yeah, look at them uh, brown granules now. I've got most of the silver and the base metals out of there. 
just looks beautiful. That's how we want it to look. Now it's time to start doing some fairly thorough rinses to get all this blue liquid out of here. The goal here is to end up with an absolutely colorless solution on these granules. Okay, we're almost there. I'm going to add some distilled water here. Still got a little bit of color going on in there. Look at them beautiful brown gold granules. I'm going to do some more. I'm going to add more nitric here. I think I've had about 2,500 milliliters total uh, throughout this whole process. And that's probably, I just added another 500 right there. We're going to shake this up and stir it up real good. Notice that uh, the reaction is very slight, which tells me that most of the silver and the base metals have been gone, have been uh, dissolved out of there. So now all we're left with are the uh, pure gold granules in here. Put this back on, let it boil some more. I added almost a half a liter of nitric acid to these granules and you can see by the reaction that most of the silver and the base metals have been removed. Uh, we do see a lot of fume production here indicating that there is still some silver and base metals that needs to come out. So we'll keep doing this until we get a colorless solution. Okay, it is 2 a.m. and you can tell by the uh, light production of fumes here that the reactions getting pretty close to being done here. I'm going to pour this off into this uh, silver jar here now. And uh, while I while I was waiting for this reaction to happen, I like to go in and read my comments. I think it's important to uh, respond to folks who take the time to make comments in my comment section on my channel. So I read those comments and I came across one by a fellow named Fred Freer and he's got a, a 12 year old son that likes to watch my refining videos and I just like to give him a shout out to Jerry Freer. Uh, thank you for being a, a subscriber to my channel and please feel free to ans ask any questions that you might have concerning any of these processes. That's uh, Jerry Freer and Fred Freer. Let me pour some distilled water on here right quick. Look at that man. Gold is just holding together just beautifully. Uh, another fella made a comment uh, about the uh, the uh, water tank that I pour my metal into. I think his name was Smoby44, and he suggested that we take and make a hose that roots the water up on top of the board to spray water on that board as I pour the molten metal on my board and that's just a brilliant suggestion by Smoby44 and uh, thank you folks for making those comments I look and I try to read all of those comments uh, and answer questions that folks might have. Man, this stuff is just looking super here. I better pay attention to what I'm doing uh, so I don't have a mishap here. This is really, really looking good.
right, I'm rinsing down the inside of the beaker here. And if you look down there at the rinse water, you can see it's got just a touch of a tint of blue. So that means we've got to uh, we've got some more rinsing to do here. And I just pour the rinse water off into this uh, silver jar because it will have a little bit of silver in it. And just to let folks know, uh, the question comes up, why do I use more expensive silver to import the gold? Why don't I use copper? And the answer is, I refine silver also. So uh, by using silver to import my gold, the first step in refining silver is to dissolve it in nitric acid. So if I use silver to import the gold, I'm essentially refining both metals at the same time, killing two birds with one stone. So that's why I use silver when I do my inquartation. In fact, let me, uh, here's the gold, man. Look at that, it's just beautiful. See how it's holding together? Those constants that I used to calculate the amount of silver to add is are just perfect. The gold cleans together in clumps and doesn't fall apart. If this fell apart into a powder, it would be a nightmare trying to separate the uh, silver solution from the solids in our beaker. This is pure gold right here, almost three nines fine. Uh, after we get done with these nitric boils. Okay, it is 2 a.m. And uh, I need to go in and get some sleep. So I'm just going to cover this up with a little distilled water. But before we retire, I just wanted to come over here and show you. Uh, this is my electrolytic silver cell. And uh, what we have in here... This is the impure shot that I feed into the anode filter basket up here on top of the silver cell. And what we've got is we've got a, a anode bar in here of my own design. I clip the positive lead from my power supply up here onto that uh, anode bar and we pass an electric current through the silver cell. And what happens is the silver in the anode basket there dissolves. And I've got this uh, stainless steel bowl full of electrolyte. And you can see in there the pure silver crystal. The, the silver ions travel through that electrolyte. And I've uh, played out on the inside of that stainless steel bowl. The uh, stainless steel bowl is connected to the negative side of the power supply. So this is why I use silver to inquart my gold because I refine silver also. Okay, everyone, I got a good night's sleep and I've got a uh, stainless, stainless, a sterling silver piece here that I'm heating up to burn off all the junk. And what I need to do is add this to my silver jar in the back, back there. I think all the uh, silver that I put in there earlier has already been consumed. So now what we'll do, is we'll stick this down into our silver jar. And that will consume any excess nitric acid that's in this solution. All right, while I'm working on getting the uh, imported gold here completely devoid of the silver and base metals, I wanna talk about these three solutions back here in these jars. This is the rinse water from last night. I'm just pouring that off into my silver jar here. But uh, folks are interested in uh, what happens to all the silver that I added and uh, the answer is it is 
in all three of these solutions that I have back here, all the silver that I added, plus any that was already in the carrot scrap before we added the silver, when I did that alloying and in quarting, now that we've uh, put the nitric acid on our gold here, look at that, man, it's just spectacular. Uh, all the silver has been removed and is in these three jars and I'll get every bit of it back out of there. 100% of the silver will get recovered. I'm gonna add some nitric now. We're gonna do another nitric acid boil here. And what my goal here is to get an absolutely clean, clear solution on the last boil. And that way I know all of the silver and base metals have been removed from our gold. While well, I'm waiting for that uh, nitric boil to complete out there, I just wanted to uh, bring attention to a matter here. One of the commenters, his name was uh, Julian Alcorso, uh, worked some numbers based on these constants that I gave, and he determined that these numbers will not produce a 27% gold alloy, as I uh, have here on my little chart but rather it actually comes down here to about a 25.7 percent alloy and uh, I didn't work the numbers he did and his numbers are right and I just threw an estimate out here of 27 percent but the actual uh, percentage of carat gold will be 25.7% if you use these constants right here. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you to this fella here, Julian Alcorso, for pointing that out. All right, we've got this nitric boil here. And if you look in there, you'll see that we've still got some color to that solution. So I do not want to uh, use this, uh, go, go with the aqua regia just yet, because we still got some color in here. And what I'm after is a solution that's absolutely colorless before we proceed to uh, put this metal in aqua regia. All right, we'll take a look at this here. Uh, if you look at the color of the solution, it's still got a little blue tint to it. That means it's still going to have a touch of, of uh, base metals and silver in it. What I'm going to do now is pour off this acid into this used dilute nitric acid bottle here. And I'm going to save it because it will still have lots of free nitric acid in it that can still dissolve silver from encorded gold. If you remember earlier in the video, I used dilute nitric acid from this bottle to uh, dissolve some of the silver out of the encorded gold. And that's why I'm saving this here it's still going to have some uh, pretty potent acid left in it. And we'll save this and use this acid that I'm pouring off right now in a, a new batch. Okay, I've got all this poured off now. What we'll do is uh, I'm going to rinse the gold off with some distilled water here. And we'll pour this rinse water off into our silver jar because it will have some free nitric acid in there and some possibly some little bit of silver so i'm going to pour it right in here well i'm going to really have this jar filled to the max i may have to start a new silver jar Don't want to pour any of our granules over. 
uh, if you notice here, the gold is staying together nicely. So those constants that I used work perfect. Okay, now what we'll do, add just a touch, just enough water here to wet it good enough. And then we're gonna add an equal amount of nitric acid here. I'm gonna boil it one more time just to make sure that I've got all the silver and base metals out of here. I've used probably about uh, three and a half liters now of concentrated nitric acid for this whole process that we've accomplished so far here. So now I'm gonna put this back up on the heat and let this boil again. Gold has been on boiling in the dilute nitrate now for about 20 minutes. You see we got some fumes being produced and I see a, just a slight bit of color in there and I just wanted to point out here how effective this is at cleaning this gold. The gold in here once we get done with these nitrate boils, once all the solution is clear and no more fumes are being produced, the gold will be very close to 3 nines fine just like it is without any further refining. My last video, I rushed it, and there was still a hint of color on the uh, $27,000 gold bar I did last year. And I'm not gonna make that mistake with this batch. I'm gonna keep going until I get absolutely colorless boiling nitric acid solution in there. The longer we stay under the boiling nitric acid, the greater our chances are of having a successful refining. This has been on boiling now for about an hour, and it looks like we're uh, ready to go to Aqua Regia here. I'm gonna dip a pipette in here, get a little of our solution into a beaker, and we're gonna do a hydrochloric acid test on this solution now. Let's see what kind of reaction we get. All right, there's silver chloride forming in there. So that means we're still pulling silver out of the gold. It's not ready to go to Aqua Regia yet. I'm gonna pour off this nitric boil now. Down off the heat so we can let it cool off just a touch. It's popping and spattering a little bit from that high heat. And then once we get that to calm down just a touch, what we'll do is we'll pour off this nitric acid in here into this bottle. It will still have some, and it does still have a little bit of color to it as you can see. So I'm glad we did this additional boil here. Right. Trade these out. Continue to pour this off now until I got all of this out of here. looking brown gold powder or granules there all right now what we're gonna do is rinse the granules off with some more distilled water and what I'll do is I'll pour this rinse water off into this fourth beaker that I've uh, set aside to collect these rinses. It'll, we'll still have just a little bit of silver in here, so we'll save this water. And when we go to cement the silver out of these solutions, I'll use this water that I'm pouring off right here for that purpose. Look at our granules holding together nicely. That is a uh, 
testament to the effectiveness of our constants that we use to calculate how much silver to add to the carat gold. All right, I've done five more rinses off camera, save some time. And now look at that beautiful brown colored gold from the encording process and parting with that hot nitric should have all the silver rinsed off here now we can check that I'm gonna put a little bit of that rinse water in a beaker collect a little of that in here and uh, let's do a test on this now I'm just gonna add some hydrochloric acid to this rinse water here see what kind of reaction we get if any turns just a touch to the cloudy side there which means we still got a little bit of hydro or a uh, little bit of silver in our gold so we'll get that rinsed out all right I've used about two liters of rinse water so far here look how nicely that gold holds together if we'd added too much silver when we did the inquartation We'd be dealing with a bunch of uh, colloidal gold and gold powder when we did these rinses. It'd be a nightmare. And what I'm going to do here is grab a little sample of this rinse water. And what we'll do is we're going to test the rinse water now with a little hydrochloric acid. Let's see if we got all the silver rinsed out of there yet. Boom. That water is staying crystal clear. So it's safe to conclude all the silver's out of here now. All right, I'm gonna do one more nitric acid boil here. Just to make sure that we've got all of the base metals and silver out of here before we go to the aqua regia. Put it up on the heat. I'm going to let this boil. This one took quite a while to uh, start boiling because it was ice cold when we put it up on the uh, hot plate there. This nitric boil's been on for about a half hour now. I'm gonna reach back here and pull it down off the heat. It's popping pretty good here. And then what we're gonna do is gonna reach in here and get us a little bit of this solution. Put it in this beaker. We'll do another test to see if we've got all the silver out yet. And it still turns a little cloudy, but I think we're going into the area of diminishing returns. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to let this cool off. I'm going to pour off this batch of nitric. And we're gonna call it on the nitric boils okay the video's getting pretty long I think it's almost 50 minutes right now we're gonna pour off this used nitric now into these containers it does look crystal clear but the uh, hydrochloric acid test proves that there's still a little bit uh, of silver or something been pulled out of here so uh, but I don't think further nitric boils would have any benefit for us. So we'll just uh, trade these out. And uh, just go ahead and rinse this. 
and we're going to call this process now completed. We've got all the silver removed, or as much as we're going to be able to, from the carrot gold, the imported gold that we have in this beaker. So I'm just going to rinse these off now, rinse this off real good, and pour the rinses off up here. I think we're going to have a much better result after these additional nitric boils that we did on this gold. And please note one more time how well this stuff is holding together and not breaking apart. And uh, it would make separating this liquid from the solids in this beaker a nightmare if it started falling apart into a powder. That's a testament to the accuracy of our constants that we used to calculate the amount of silver that we needed for the importation. All right, here's our imported gold. It's been parted with nitric. Beautiful. Quick review of all the products that we uh, generated here. We've got uh, two bottles of used dilute nitric acid that we can reuse in a future refining. I've got three jars of solution that is loaded with silver and I'll get all the silver back out of each one of these solutions by filtering it and cementing it on copper. Back here I've got a uh, three liters of distilled water that we use to rinse our gold off and last and certainly not least is this beautiful caramel brown colored pure gold granules with all of the silver and all of the base metals removed with the hot dilute nitric acid treatments. We used about four liters of nitric acid for this whole process. Okay, we did it. We imported the carrot scrap with silver. And then we used hot nitric acid boils to pull all that silver back out, which all the silver and base metals that was already in the carrot scrap got pulled back out with it. So now what we have in this beaker is nearly pure gold, very close to three nines fine. But the only way to get it to three nines fine is to refine it with aqua regia. In quarting with silver, one of the most valuable refining techniques that I've ever learned, second only to incremental nitric acid dosing. And we're going to demonstrate how to do that in part four when we dissolve this gold with aqua regia. This will conclude part three of the series. Thanks for watching.